All right, what is up? Welcome to the channel. If you want to know exactly how to get the mods installed for the first three mainline stalker games installed on your PlayStation and Xbox, you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you the exact steps that you need to take in order to get the job done. And we can just get straight to the point. No time being wasted. Let's do it. All right, first things first, you want to go to mod.io. The website link is also in the description, so you feel free to press that link and follow along. Once you arrive on the website, the first thing you will see is a link at the top right corner for browse games. Select that, then it should bring you to the next menu. You can just type in Stalker if you don't already see the game as one of the suggestions in the main browser. Browse it up. Once you get it pulled up, this is where you can begin to browse which mods you might be interested in installing. Now, on the bottom left side of the screen, you'll see this little human icon. Um, this is, it, and when you hover over it, it'll say my account. You select that, and then it'll pull up this menu with various authentication methods for you to get started. Uh, select your mode. Now, I would recommend whatever makes sense. If you have an Xbox account, then log in with your Xbox account. If you have a PlayStation account, log in with your PlayStation account. Now, as you're logging in, you might need to do various two-step verifications, maybe with your phone or going to your email and confirming. Now, once you're logged in, uh, you'll get back to the home screen. You'll see in the top right corner, it'll be asking you to log in again. Do log in again. And this part was a little confusing because I could see that I'm logged into my account. But then when I tried to install the mod on the console, it was saying that I'm not logged in or I need to verify things. Now, don't get confused by this because when you go to log in again, it's going to pull up this screen. And it's going to want you to fill out this form like you're creating mods and you don't need to fill this form out. Like once you get this, this screen to show up where it's asking you to fill out this information about the mod that you're creating, you can just leave this page. Now, this is where the fun begins. You just go back, uh, you choose which stalker game you want to have the mods installed for. Uh, you can just browse into the screen. You can look around. There's a bunch of mods in here, right? Um, now, the thing that's interesting about this is there's, there's a lot of different options on here. Um, if you select Xbox, for example, you'll see that you have 17 mods shown, right? So you can browse through these 17 mods but then if i select ps5 that 17 now drops down to 12 right 12 of the 17 shown so it really shows here that on playstation even if i hit ps4 on playstation there's less mods available than there is on xbox all right so now starting with playstation uh what you'll do is you'll just enter the game you get into the game you load up the game and then on the main screen on the home screen what you'll do is you just go down to where it says mod.io, you select that, and as soon as you select it, it'll bring up a terms of use agreement. Um, you'll need to agree to that. It could be a little wonky, like you'll probably be selecting X and it's just taking forever to go through. I think you need to scroll down the whole like terms of a service agreement and then select X and then it'll let you get through it. Now, this is why the credentials for whatever PlayStation account that you're using needs to match with the login credentials that you used on the mod.io website. Is because at this point it's going to read your account and then you'll see it say not logged in and it'll say you know mod state and then it should lock in or verify that information about your account and then that's when you will see it say uh, user and it'll say like your username then it'll say you know mod state and whatever ready to play right um, and you'll see the occupied memory is going to say zero up there right now, uh, same thing on Xbox. It's literally the same process. And I just wanted to make sure about that. But same process. You go to your home screen. You select mod.io. You accept the user agreement. Um, and then you just log in with your login credentials. And then it should pull up um, the, same, the same card in the top left corner where it says user and uh, mod state and, you know, what occupied memory space. Now, the first thing that I did notice is that on PlayStation, we had 1,000 um, megabytes of, you know, occupiable memory, whereas on Xbox, we get 5,000. So big jump there. And I think that might actually have something to do with uh, the DirectX compatibility that's on Xbox versus uh, PlayStation. Yeah, because PlayStation just doesn't have DirectX and also... I think PlayStation has less 
memory space to work with all together anyway. And then on top of that, um, we know that the Xbox does have better hardware. And yeah, so, you know, this is a win. This is a win for Xbox players. You get a little more space. Now, from here, it's pretty straightforward. You go on the mod.io website and you browse through the mods that you see. If you want to install the mod on your console, you just select subscribe. It's really that simple on both Xbox and PlayStation. Now, after you hit subscribe on the mod.io website, you go back to the game. Um, if you're already sitting like where it says mod.io on the console and you, you can just refresh it by selecting it and backing out and you, you'll see it populate in the top corner. You'll see it saying downloading and then after it's done downloading, you'll see the occupied memory space increase, right? So with the increased memory space and you know it's literally saying ready to play, that's how you know that the mod is ready, but you can also go into, when you select mod dio, you can look at your load order, which is important. Maybe not so much yet because the mods that are on console, eh, the load order doesn't matter that much at the time that this video is being made. It's just not that many mods. But yeah, once it says mod is ready, that's how you know the mod is ready to go. You can play the game with the mod. You can start the game up and now the mods work. There it is. That's how you do it. That's how you get started. That's how you make the mods work. Now, something I do want to highlight here, um, for example, um, and this is like at the time that the video is being made, um, the Misery 1.0 mod. This is going to be a good mod, first of all. Um, it's already working. It's working right now for Xbox players. For PS5, it's causing like crashes. And I went in here and I could see like they're having conversations. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, you know, this unfortunately uh, it still crashes when loading the game. And that's what I experienced when I when I downloaded it on PS5. This this mod just wasn't working on PS5. It's working on Xbox, though. So just something to be aware of. You know, um, for PlayStation users, if you're on here, I would say just kind of take a little gander um, in the description and check out what's going on in the chat just to kind of make sure if the mod is working or if there's something that they're waiting for. Um, I, I seen that um, this this modder, he was basically waiting for approval for something. And basically the problem is, is that, you know, for console, they can't use the configs. They can't use the scripts and shaders. So that's a that's a that's a real problem with, you know, getting these mods to work on console. So this is why the modding community on console is just not anywhere near where the modding community is on PC because they're just not held back as much. But anyway, once you have your mods installed and you select it, subscribe, and you go and you, you check out the mod, here's a special tidbit. Once you have the mod on there and you already select the subscribe and you know, you're playing with the mod, if you decide that you don't like this mod anymore, just come back to your main menu um, and then go back to the mod dial website and the mod that you have, you know, that you don't want anymore, just unselect subscribe and then it go back to your game and then you'll see the mod get removed from the game and it, It'll free up that space and everything. So you don't you're not hard locked into any mods that you're using on here. You're not stuck with it. You can just subscribe to the mod or you can unsubscribe to the mod. And that's what makes mod.io really good for kind of streamlining the process. And that covers it. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. If there's anything that I might have missed here, uh, throw that in the comment box and I'll make sure to you know address things like that. Uh, for future videos and as always be easy my discussion like video game Socrates I just made this video hoping that you will follow me the only thing I'm addressing is curiosities 